Hey everyone, it's Jason. Welcome to another Marvel vs. System 2 player card game. This is for Space and Time. This is the second of the third Assemble set. Uh, volume 2, box number 8. Uh, so the Assemble uh, storyline or arc jumps into the Marvel Studio Collection or the MCU. Also, you know, Cinematic Universe. Uh, the first set went over... Um, like, the Earthbound characters and added some more new characters that weren't in the original um, Heroes and Villains sets. Um, this one's going to hop into these space characters. Uh, obviously, like Thanos showing here. Um, and then the third set, you can also check out, we'll have a lot more of the female characters that got missed and weren't showing around. Um, so, yeah, this is kind of cool because then it gives you some different... Um, extra characters, and instead of doing it just like the original um, cinematic set for like one set's heroes, one set's villains, this has a mixture of both. Although, this set does lean a little bit heavier towards the villains. Um, so yeah, we'll be stripping here. Cosmic characters unite in the second installment into the Assemble story arc expansion for the Versa system. A powerful and well-balanced roster of good and evil from Odin to Thanos join the fray in this MCU-based set to post iconic imagery from several Marvel movies, joined together for eternity by the Space and Time Stones. So, alright, we will jump into that. We do have the little rule book pamphlet, which I will reference as need be uh, for different cards. Some of these have a little bit trickier effects, uh, but watch them, I think I can just kind of explain. So we're just going to go ahead and get right into it. We're going to start with our first main character, which is the Grand Master from Thor Ragnarok, who's, of course, a villain. Um, he has Who's Having Fun, uh, main green, put a 1-1 one -one counter on two different supporting characters. Um, no one loves you more than the Grand Master. Level up 7. When this character strikes, the Grand Master gains an XP. So it's interesting here is because for him to level up, he has to strike. This is when a character strikes. He doesn't care to do it himself. He has actually zero attack. So his idea is he wants to boost up everyone around him, and he's going to play you know, the Grandmaster. He's just letting everyone else do the dirty work. Uh, now if we flip to his level 2 here, keeps his who having fun ability, also gains the Contest of Champions, which is a great nod to the... Um, comic book version. Main, choose two face-up supporting characters to strike each other. So you can just pick characters and have them fight. Um, that's actually pretty fun. Um, because you could use that as a way to, like, get rid of, like, your opponent's, ho your opponent's holding back certain characters or protecting them or doing whatever because they have, um, there's some ability they want to use. Here you can just, nope, I'm just gonna go ahead and make them fight. Alright, then we have Odin, who's a hero, of course. He's from the first Thor movie, the Odin Force. At the start of your turn, put a 1 1 counter on Odin, so, ooh, every turn is gonna get bigger. The most powerful being in the Nine Realms, level up 1. At the end of your turn, if Odin has 10 or more attack, he gains an XP. So, after basically 3 turns, unless you boost him quicker, he will level up. This is a very interesting uh, character design here. So he went from a 7-7 seven, seven to boost up to level 10-10, ten, 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 but once he hits that, he levels up, and he falls into the Odin sweep. Odin can't attack, strike, or have 1-1 one, one counters. Um, he may never awaken. He has two different abilities. He has level down and level up. Um, so, at the end, so level down is two. At the end of each enemy turn, Odin gains an XP. Um, and then level up is when Odin is stunned, he gains an XP. So this is a very interesting idea, and I love when they play around with these and make them a little bit more thematic than just, oh, every character is always just getting this. So it's like, you can, um, basically if he doesn't do anything on his turn and he rests back up, he'll jump back up to his 7-7, seven, seven, gets him a couple of turns and go back up to his, um, up to his 10-10. So you get a bunch of good high attacks out of him. Um, otherwise, here you have the option if he gets two counters for level down. Um, he, gains, he gains XP, he is stunned. 
Um, now it does say here, it says, um, instead of getting XP to advance to a high level, it gains XP to progresses it to a lower level. When a character gains a level down XP, putting XP counter on the main character that is one level lower than its current level. If a character has both a level up and level down power, it's possible for it to have both kinds of XP. However, once it levels up or levels down, both types of XP, um, are removed. Um, yes, it says, Odin actually starts off as the most powerful self at level 1, but after a few turns, um, he'll level up and take a nap. When he's asleep, he can gain either level up XP or level down XP. If he gets two level down XP, he wakes up and goes back to level 1. Um, both kinds of XP will be removed, but if he gets two level up instead, he'll level up to level 3. So it's kind of neat. So you have to kind of keep track of both. I think the idea is what you should do then is, and so if he levels up, is maybe keep the level one card kind of like at least off to the side, maybe something like that. So that way you know you can put counters on there. Um, but if he levels up, if we get a level three version, which drops him down to a three three, and he says, "My time has come." At the end of your turn, Moon Odin. Um, so you know, very interesting, especially for a main character, because if they die, you lose the game. So basically what you have to do is level him up. He's going to keep gaining levels, and he's going to jump to level 2. Then you have to have him not get hit for two turns, um, so that that way you can drop him back down. Otherwise, once he hits level 3 here, it's only a matter of time before you're eventually going to lose him. Um... And you can't really help too much in combat. But it makes for a very thematic character. Alright, so for another very thematic villain main character, we have the Outrider. Which I wouldn't have... You never would have thought, oh, these guys would make sense as a main character. But they're very interesting. So we have a 3-1. Not powerful at all. But we have Blood Despair. You start the game with six Outrider main characters on your side. So we have one card there. We have two, three, four, five, and six. We have five more versions of them. All the exact same. So you start with six main characters. Swarm. You have any number of characters named Outrider on your side. This power can't be turned off. And Ferocious. Well, in melee combat, this character strikes before characters without Ferocious. So yeah, they're going to get, even though they're three, which isn't much, they're not going to be able to take out really high-powered threats later on. The fact is you can gang them all up, um, do lots of team attacks with them. You can play their swarm, which means you can also have a lot of their supporting character versions out as well. Um, and then because they have that, they technically have um, 18 health, total because they have three freaking after you defeat every one of their main characters so it's going to take a little bit harder to take them out as well because you have to keep damaging each one separate and you can lose two or three and still have a bunch of sitting around so that's a very interesting character as well they have some really neat designs on these our next one up is we have talos um who of course is a scroll uh from captain marvel now you notice he has no team ability he says you can't trust anyone Talos has every photographic universe team affiliation. Um, Skrulls have inc infiltrated C-53, level up 8. When Talos team attacks, he gains 1 XP for each attacker. Um, so he's going to join with everybody. So at the time of the printing of this, there's only four teams. There is the heroes and villains from the Marvel set. And then the two sets from the Buffy, which were the Scoobies and the Evil Forces. Um... And I don't even know if that's tech in that. Yeah, that was like very early on. So I know after that, they've also released like the X file sec. Uh, more currently, they also have the boys that just came out. Um, the A A AEW wrestling sec just came out. Technically, it's put, I would imagine that would be considered photographic. I haven't actually seen if that rule, but it's real people. Um, I don't remember if Aliens and Predators, they didn't list it, they came out before us, but I don't know if they were, if they may have been drawings, if they may have been realistic, I don't remember. Um, so there's a couple more teams now that can be going, but none of that matters unless you're mixing Marvel with another set. 
because it doesn't matter if he has the X-Files team ability, the Bureau, or the Scooby-Doo, Scoobies from Buffy, um, you know, or if he's part of the boys, unless you're playing with ghost cards and mixing them into your sets. Um, otherwise, basically just for the Marvel set, he can basically be a hero and a villain. Um, which is kind of a neat ability, but the fact is, again, you being the cinematic universe only has two teams, it's not as impressive if, if, as if you put him in, like, the, um, the same ability in the ant, or the cartoon, or the drawing one. Because then you'd have Avengers, Brotherhood, X-Men, Spider-Verse, you know, Venom, every single other team. Um, alright, but when he levels up, goes to scroll form, he has the same you can't trust anyone ability, and it takes practice and talent. Main rag, choosing enemy character team affiliation. Enemy characters with that team affiliation can attack Talos during their next turn. Now again, this actually becomes the opposite. This becomes even more dangerous in the photographic universe because if you only have heroes and villains, and that could potentially, someone could be making a hero or villain only deck. So you could literally shut someone's entire deck down from attacking him every turn. All right. Then our last main character, a little bit of a twist, is we have a level 2 Thanos. So in the original set, we did have a Thanos that went from level 1 to level 2. Now we have an alternate level 2, so you can switch to this one instead. It says, bathe in the starways with blood. Main, blue, put a minus 1, minus 1 counter on each enemy supporting character. And then, find them, my children. Level up 2. When a child of Thanos appears on your side, Thanos gains an XP. When Gamora or Nebula appears on your side, Thanos loses an XP. Um, interesting. So he has to get his cards out, but um, Gamora and Nebula, Gamora and Nebula can stop him. Yeah, so if you're playing, if you bought the base game, uh, the base stuff for the cinematic universe, you already have the Thanos, you can just swap this out if you want this one instead. Because now this one will level up, and he gets a level 3 version. Uh, I mean, Infinity Wars. Bring balance to the universe. At the start of your turn, you may reveal exactly 6 Marvel locations with different names from your hand. And snap. If you do, KO half of all characters rounded up. Um, that is actually pretty darn powerful. Um that you can do that. So any Marvel card, though, has to be, it'll say a little Marvel here at the bottom. So this one, this is again kind of like Talos, where it like, where you can mix and match with the Buffy and X-Files and all that. This means you can't mix those cards with that. So it's kind of a little bit of a twist. Um, yeah, I do like this as a fact. Because here's one thought you think about this, you're like, so it would stop you from doing this every single turn. As long as you keep them cards in your hand. Absolutely nothing. You could keep snapping every single turn. And keep eliminating half and half and half. And it's always going to round. Um, count all the characters on the side. There's an odd number. KO more than, more than one. So eventually you get down to where you could have. Just Thanos and one other character. You know the other main character. But also says like in the rules here. Um. You choose which characters you get, get to KO. If you want to win the game, we recommend KOing each main, enemy main character, but that's up to you. So yeah, realistically, you can KO your opponent's main character so you can just win the game, um, which I think is the idea of it. But you can also choose to be a complete, you know, complete a-hole and be like, nope, I'm going to eliminate half of the other characters and not do it. Um... Although, I would argue that if someone did that, they did it for one time, I might let them slide and just see what happens. Like, maybe they're just trying to, like, hey, I'm going to play this more thematically. I'll give you a chance to get a comeback and beat me yet. But if they did it, like, two or three turns in a row, I'd probably just forfeit the game. Um, all right. Now we have our supporting characters. We're going to get a bunch of them. One, two. And we have four copies of each of these, unless otherwise noted. So we start with Yandu, also has no team ability, or, uh, team up there. Uh, Pragam Pragamist. 
As a recruit, Yango Q0 or villain, he appears with that team affiliation. So this is kind of cool. Uh, when Yango appears, if he has the hero, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each other character on your side. Villain, put a minus one counter, minus one, minus one counter on each character on the enemy's side. Um, that's actually pretty powerful for a two-cost character um, to boost or hinder every single character on the field. Um, cool. Then we have Korith. One of our villains from Guardians of the Galaxy. Also could have been from Captain Marvel. Um, alien physio Physiology. Chorus can have minus one, minus one counters. The Pursuer. Uh, main reg. When Korof kills an enemy character in combat, he gets two plus one, plus one counters. And an additional two plus one, plus one counters for each other copy of that character already in its tail pile. He can boost up very fast. We have... Hello, Sears. So we get his um, supporting version, who also has Pragamus. Let him choose hero or villain. When Talos has hero, characters on your side have Fearless. When villain, characters have Violent. I like it. Boosts everybody. Fearless says, when attacking a main character, this character strikes a double attack. Um, and then Violent says, when character attacks a supporting character, strikes a double attack. So you kind of decide um, maybe how you want to team attack or that, or if you're going to be trying to hit the main character or supporting characters. We're going to get Call Obsidian, who is one of the ch child of Thanos, so that will trigger uh, the main character of Thanos' ability. When Thanos is on your side, Call Obsidian has Monstrous. This is kind of a neat way to like, mix these guys together, make a theme deck. Character ha uh, Monstrous is when this character is defending against melee team attack, it strikes back against each character. And then it's Chain Hammer. Uh, uh, hammer Combat Green if Call Obsidian is a defender of a range attack, cancel that attack. So you can block those. Interesting. Um, then we have another child of Thanos. We have Corvus Glaive. Um, gives. As long as he's with Thanos, he has stealth, uh, which says this character can melee attack backdrop characters even while they're protected. Uh, Glaive Mastery, Reaction, uh, Reg. When an effect gives an enemy character in combat with Corvus Glaive 1 1 counters or attack defense, instead, give that character gains no, gains no plus 1 plus 1 counters and takes no attack defense. Um, so basically, when he's fighting him, they can't boost. Um, so very interesting. All right. So far, a lot of villains, a lot of villains. So let's look at a hero we got. We got Groot. So again, like I said, this is very... We have, we've had technically two characters. Talos and Yandu could both be heroes. Other than that, it's Ben Odin. So we get very few heroes in this set, but that's all right. Um, Groot says we are Groot. If another character on your side would get wounded, get a wound, you may wound Groot instead. Yeah, so you just take some hits for you. We have Ebony Maw, another one of the Child of Thanos. Well, Thanos on your side, Maw has lethal. Um, it says this character would wound a defending supporting character, KO it. Uh, and telekinesis, main yellow, put the top card of your deck on your tail pile, then put a minus one, minus one cards equal to that card's cost on any supporting character. If the maw wounds a supporting character this way, KO it. Okay, so if you can knock him down to zero and he gets flipped, um, you can automatically KO guys. That's pretty cool. 8-8, eight, eight, ranged, flying. Um... Up next, we have Fenris from Thor Ragnarok. Creature and Ferocious. Um, so again, creatures with Ferocious... Or ferocious means they get attack before characters without Ferocious. And a creature says can't have equipment just the power can't be turned off. Uh, what have they done to you? At the end of your turn, if Hela is based up on your side, you may put Fenris from your tail pile next to Hela. Um, yeah, so just... It's an 18 attack. Um, one health, but 18 attack. That's crazy. Um, and Hell is going to be in one of the other sets as well. 
That's one thing. I like when the Kai get that cooked meat. Like, assuming you're going to keep buying these and not buy one pack and be done. Um, their last supporting character is Surker, who has Ragnarok. When Surker attacks, KO, all resor KO resources equal to its attack. So it currently only has one attack, so it's not that big of a deal, but 15 defense. But imagine if you keep boosting this up. But a thing to remember is if there are no enemy resources left, you have to KO friendly ones. Um, so yeah, there's definitely, you have to fight. Also, as a note to this, it says, uh, triggers right when he attacks. There's no chance to play plot twists or superpowers to increase the attack at that point. However, other effects it triggers when someone attacks could be ordered to increase his attack before Ragnarok resolves. So when you choose to attack, um, and then before you pick the defenders and before you get to then play plot twists, all that, you have to get rid of resources. You have to do it before you choose any of that. Um... Yeah, so I also noticed that we had three of the children of Thanos. We are missing one at least big obvious one, which would be Proxima Midnight. She is in the next sect. Spoilers. Uh, just in case you were wondering why she wasn't here. Because she's in the next set. Again, has a lot of female characters. So they added her in that one. Alright, then our last four cards is the special location, the Bifrost. During your build phase, your main characters may pay any power symbol. If it does, turn this location face down, then choose a supporting character and remove it from the game with its counters. At the start of the owner's next turn, it appears on their side. Um, if, ha if Heimdall is on your side, you may exhaust him instead of paying the power symbol. That's actually pretty fun. You can use Heimdall to pay for it. Um... So, yeah, I don't think I had any special rules for this. No. But, um, it does say, choose a supporting character and remove it from the game of his card. It starts its owner's turn, it appears on their side. So, basically, you just remove someone from the game for a turn. Um, if you're gonna throw in extra cards for a location, this isn't a bad thing, I guess, to have. Um, although, I think if you're using Hemgel, it's gonna be a lot more powerful. Um, but for a one-time removal of someone from the game, you'd have to specifically have a reason you need to be doing that, I think. Um, as just a character removal for your opponent, it would be kind of interesting because, um, you know, even if you had all four in your deck, you could use this four times, even with Hemdell, so it was for free, basically. Um... Yeah, I can save you if they have a big character, but since you only removes them for one turn, um, it's not super helpful, I guess. I, I guess I don't, I don't think it's that great, but again, I think if you can find specific builds around it, um, could be very, maybe useful if you're playing with Odin, just because if he starts getting weak, um, you can remove him from the field, so that way he doesn't take damage, um. You know, there we go. So that's possible there. All right. So then the last thing we're just going to look at is we'll re-show off the deck list. The checklist, just in case you wanted to make sure you know what we had. Um, oh, we're right, six copies. All right. So that's what we have for Space and Time. Yes, yeah, so if you're enjoying this cinematic universe set, here's definitely another one to pick up if you want some more villain characters to play as. Um, or you can check out the other ones. All right. See you guys later. Bye.